Right, good evening everybody. So, we've um, finally got to Age of Empires 2 after completing uh, the final campaign of Age of Empires on Sunday. Um, so I've just loaded it up and um, it's a little bit of a different layout to uh, Age of Empires 1. Um, so, let's, uh, let's just see. So if we go on single player, go on the campaigns, and then we're uh, brought to this screen where we've got several different campaigns. So we've got Africa, America, Asia, Europe, and then Western Europe. So if we'll go with the uh, Africa one first. And, uh, well, yeah, should we just start top left and work our way around the map? My captain is dead. Tell King Manuel that the red blood of Francisco de Almeida, conqueror of the Indies, stains a white beach at the edge of his empire. After braving Spanish knights, Berber horsemen, and Indian elephants, it was the king's lost faith that the devoted servant took his life's breath. Lies, they whispered in our king's ear. They called Don Francisco mad with lust for power, riches, and glory. Those jackals. Those men who had never set foot on a swaying caravel in a monsoon or felt the heat of the African sun sting upon a reddened neck. Was not my captain's devotion measured in the sweat and blood he poured across three continents and three oceans? I was a boy in the battlefield of Toro, birthed the legend of Don Francisco. While the last of the Moors held in Granada, the Christian kingdoms of Iberia warred for the throne of Castile. King Henry had died, leaving his kingdom to his daughter Juana, wife of King Alfonso of Portugal. The union of the two lands was celebrated in our country, but for the ambition of a queen, it was not to be. Queen Juana's 25-year-old aunt Isabella sought the throne for herself. Her powerful husband, the King of Aragon, led his army into Castile who sees the crown for his wife and unites that kingdom with his own. The armies of Aragon and Portugal met in the city of Toro to decide the fate of three kingdoms. Right, okay, so the objectives, defend the city of Toro. Let's look at the hints for this one. You are restricted to the castle age and a population limit of 200. The Aragonese can train new units while you initially cannot, so speed and aggressiveness is critical. Killing the Duke of Alba and Cardinal Mendoza will provide you with gold to use later once you take control of the Hanista forces. The bridge into Isabelista uh, held Zamora is well defended, but finding a beachhead further east will give you access to less defended parts of the city and farmlands. Okay. Francisco, my father's army is broken and the Argonese approach Toro. We must defend the city, Sao Jorge. Right, okay, maybe, maybe I should have done the original uh, Why tutorial. <laughs> We cannot hide in Zoro like rats. Our enemies have three camps between here and Zamora that we must destroy. Alright, so should we head up this way? 
one thing I'm just going to do is just check the uh, the game speed. Where is that? Um, So it won't let us uh, edit the game speed. Okay, but we'll just leave it as it is. We have few men, but many soldiers are hiding in the wilderness. If Prince Juan goes to them, they will find their courage. I'll say this for See. Okay, so he's filling us up nice. Alright, so we've got the town centre down here. We've got a market. And a stable. Watchtower. Blacksmith, so that's kind of the equivalent to the storage pit. Um, barracks. Okay, so... Indeed. Okay, so we're already on the east. Let's just see what's down here. And there's a uh, there's a dock over here. See, indeed. So yeah, we'll uh, we'll head back this way. The soldiers report the Duke of Alba and Cardinal Mendoza are patrolling nearby. Capturing them would fetch a large ransom. Okay, so uh, defend the city Toro, destroy the camps. Um, bring Prince Juan and to the remnants of King Alfonso's army and find and unhorse the Duke of Alba. So this looks like one of the camps that we need to destroy. Oh. Bail, 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 bail. Right. So we can't create any villages. I'm not quite sure what we're supposed to do here. Probably uh, jump onto the uh, the tutorial. We'll see how we get. We'll uh, we'll go as far as we can on this, and then we'll, uh, we'll we'll jump off that if we need to. Okay, we're going for a little explore, seeing how many armies we can find. Probably should do that. And the units do move, uh, move slowly. Fareigo way. 
Entendido. Sim. Entendido. Quais são as vossas obras? Farei o way. Sim. Feels a lot more sluggish Farei than uh, Age of Empires 1. I will say that so far. Farei o way. Entendido. Sim. Farei o way. Sim. I'm not liking the way that when you, uh, as soon as you click somewhere else, they all uh, reformate. If you want to go down there. <coughs> Excuse me. Still recovering from this cold a little bit. Sim. Avançar. Entendi. Atacar. Farei o way. Sim. Avançar. As armas. Atacar. Entendido. Okay, I don't really want to take my units all the way back to the uh, the opening village just to get them to heal up. Quais são as Farei nossas away. ordens? Entendido. Sim. Farei o way. Kind of Acerta! Possible, but... Avançar! Atacar! As armas! Atacar! Avançar!
play some. I forgot. I said about I'll see the sport. I'm inside. Let's destroy the three camps. See, what the car? Why some Right, so they're all healed up now. Um Intended.
bring them back right. Right, we need more houses, so we can't even build one villager. Why some of bosses are these? Oh, see the sport. Let's have a quick check on the options again. Alright, okay, so where are we going to go now? Find we'll go back up to those buildings. Oh, so the sport. What the car? Ourselves a priest, well, that's handy. God, why do they have to move so slowly? Eu dispor, farei o lugar. Pois farei o lugar. Ao seu dispor. Right, ok, where to next? I guess. See. Estou pronto. Preparar. Olá. Preparar. Can't just gonna take that, mate. 
strategies to get back. Oof. Do they not know how to run? I don't think we've got anything else left down there, so we might as well go and attack this camp here. There's pretty loads of them just lurking around, aren't there?
Duke of Alba has fetched us a sizable ransom. Yeah, I think this isn't going to go well for us again, guys. The prince has been gravely wounded. We've been defeated. Well, maybe we do need to go on the uh, learn to play. We are without a leader. The dead king of Scotland has no heir. War creeps in from the south. What Edward Longshanks, the avaricious king of England, has returned from successful campaigns in Wales and France. As Longshanks turns his attention to Scotland, the shadow of fear settles across the highlands. The English have thousands of Welsh longbowmen, hundreds of knights on horseback, and dozens of siege weapons. We Scottish have a rabble of untrained soldiers who do not even know how to march in a straight line. We must act soon. If we're to have any chance of resistance, we need to forge an army by any means necessary. Okay, so we'll, uh, we'll go for this tutorial then. The English are terrorizing all of Scotland, and it's time for us to fight back. But if we are to... Every one of us will need to learn how to march and fight. Follow the path to the blue flag. First, click the soldier. Good. Now right-click near the blue flag. Good. Now move to the next flag. Click the soldier, then right-click near the flag. Excellent. Now to move to the next flag, you must walk through the black area. Moving into the black area reveals more of the map. The black area represents unexplored territory. That's all there is to it. Now go to the next flag where you will meet some allied soldiers. Okay, so it's all pretty basic stuff. To right move now. all your soldiers at once, click near the units and drag around them. Then right click to move. Them. Try moving your soldiers to the next flag. Did all your units make it to the flag? The road ahead is guarded by an English outpost. Scroll up to the outpost building by moving the mouse to the very top of the screen. Then click the red outpost. Right click the outpost to attack. Oh. Destroyed. That should slow the English raids. Oh. Keep following the path to the. <coughs> oh. Home sweet home. But wait, the English are angry that you destroyed their outpost. They're coming to attack the village. Yeah, we'll have them. Don't panic. We'll have them. Just click your soldiers and right-click the red English soldiers to attack. Defeat the enemy soldiers, and you will have won your first battle. Good job. Now you know how to fight back against the English army. Scotland has soldiers now, if only a few. But if we are to turn back the greed of Edward Longshanks, We'll need many more recruits and much more gold in our coffers. These ancient stones and oaks around us will soon be drenched with the blood of clansmen. Wait, what? So... 
There's a European William White Right, right, okay. It didn't make it clear that that's the one that I should have started with. Let's just uh, see if we can uh, change the name of the uh, the stream here to coincide with that. army marches on its stomach, or so the old saying goes. My clansmen have been farming and tending sheep for hundreds of years, but gathering enough food to feed an army is a different matter entirely. Without a strong economy, the meagre forces that we have cobbled together will collapse again. Okay, so he's got to learn how to feed, gather 50 food, 50 wood and 50 gold. So to support the Scottish army, you will need to build up your stockpile of resources. To win, <coughs> gather 50 food, 50 wood and 50 gold. The yeah. villager will continue working for you, carrying the food to the town centre. Air love. All pretty basic stuff on this one. The amount of food you have is shown in the upper left corner of the screen. In addition to your food stockpile, you can see your current wood, gold and stone stockpiles. The more villagers you have, the faster you can gather resources. Assign your new villagers to gather food. Where is the gold? There it is. Need fear. Good. You found some gold. Job. You now have enough wood. Great. You now have 50 food. Wood. Also gather 50 wood and 50 gold. To gather wood, click a villager, then right click a tree. If you haven't found any gold, search in the unexplored territory. <coughs> It just feels so slow, this does. I'm sure I'll, uh, I'll get used to it. Excellent. You now have enough gold. Right, so have we, uh, have we done the mission You're then? well on your way to making a city. Edward Longshanks, for all its disrepute, has shown his military tactics in Wales, England and France to be very effective, if not cruel and ruthless. He is indeed an enemy to be feared. The English sacked the town of Berwick upon Tweed. With that I could call it a battle, but it was truly more than a massacre. Unless we organise our army, there will be more massacres to follow. I pray that we can be ready when Longshanks comes. Villages throughout the Highlands, there is grim talk of skirmishes between Scotland and England. 
We lost the town of Dunbar this week. Scottish defenders broke ranks and fled. The English have an army that is larger and better trained. To compete with them, we are going to need new recruits to pick up spear, sword and bow. We must transform these shepherds into soldiers. Right, it's train for militia. We will need many soldiers to defend yeah. our homeland. To win, you will need to create four militia. We'll start by creating villagers. Click your town center, then click the Create Villager button in the lower left corner of the screen. It takes time for the villager to appear. If your town center is selected, you can see the progress in the status area at the bottom of the <coughs> Good job. The villager has appeared next to your town centre. Now, create another villager. You need additional housing to support your population. To build a house, click a villager. Click the buildings button. Click the build house button. Then click where you want to build the house. If more than one villager builds a building, it will go up faster. Good job. Try building another house. Each house supports five units. The population indicator at the top of the screen shows your current and supportable population. Other buildings are made just like houses. Try building a barracks. The barracks is a military building. Barracks complete. Now you can create soldiers. Click the barracks, then click the Create oh, yeah. Militia button. Mm -hmm. Selecting different buildings or units gives you different <coughs> options in the lower left corner of the screen. That's one militia Hello. unit. Create three more and you will have enough soldiers to protect this area and win the scenario. Click Are the barracks, then quickly click the Create Militia button three more times to make three soldiers in a row. Kid. Now that you have a few soldiers, you'll be able to defend this area against English attacks. Okay, that's that one done. Now that we have militias stationed across the border, the English have slowed their raids. But facing Longshank's army will be another matter. The wicked English king is yet to bring his famous longbows to bear. Our militias can only get us so far. We're going to need more advanced weapons. Rumours creep in from the south of a giant who leads the forces of Scotland. His great sword driving through earth, man and horse alike. If this mythical knight can stall the English advance, it will give us time to develop the arms we need. Even now our smiths are forging swords and fletchers are crafting arrows and crossbow bolts. Right, so we need to, to win, we'll need to advance the feudal age and repel the English raids. Uh, your soldiers will automatically attack any near soldiers, near enemy soldiers that are near to them. You can also select your soldiers and right click on a specific enemy unit that you want to attack. Okay, okay. So we want to advance to the feudal age. The English use very advanced weapons and armor. To win, you will need to advance Kid, to the feudal Kid, age and repel the English Kid. raids. You're going to need to research some technologies Kid, of your Kid. own to increase the strength of your civilization. For example, researching loom makes your villagers harder to kill. To research loom, click the town centre, then click the research loom button. Good. Researching technology costs you resources, but improves your civilization. While researching, you can put your villagers to work and use your military units to explore. Kid, bid fear. Forget it. Tall. Tall. Bid fear. Oh, 
Have enough. Hit the fear. Pull. Pull. Hit the fear. Pull. Pull. Hit the fear. New technologies and buildings become Pull. available when you advance to a new age. To advance from the Dark Age to the Feudal Age, you need 500 food. Now you have enough food to advance to the Feudal Age. However, you also need two buildings from your current age. You already have a barracks. So now have your villagers build a mill. The mill is a drop-off point for food. So build it next to your food source. Kid, have enough. Tall. Kid, tall, tall. Bit fear. Oh, mid fear. Target it. Oh, kid. In addition to gathering Target food it. at forage bushes, oh. villagers can herd sheep or hunt deer for food. Now you can advance from the dark age oh. to the feudal age. Click your town center, then click the advance to feudal age button. Good. You're on your way to the feudal age. Kid, tall, 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 tall. Targeting. Bit fear. Two arms. The English are making a sneak attack. Kid, tall. Go 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 go. Tall way. Targeting. Gun cut. Now that the battle is over, create some extra militia units in the barracks to replenish your forces. Congratulations. Advancing to the next stage is the best way to improve your civilization, the idle villager button. Click it and locate villagers who are not currently assigned to a task. Now that you're in the feudal age, you can upgrade your militia to men at arms. Click the barracks, then click upgrade to men at arms. Upgrading to man at arms will change all your militia units to the more powerful men at arms. Okay, that's almost done now. The English are attacking again. Teach them a lesson with your new men at arms. Done cut. Alright, going down. The English are no match for your builders. Long Shanks has invaded. Stormed and sacked the city of Perth. Worse, he has captured the fabled Stone of Scone and declared himself King of Scotland. If we cannot bring about a victory in battle soon, the Scottish armies will be too demoralised to put up any fight at all. If this mythical Scottish giant does exist, I wish that he would bring his forces up to Stirling, where we shall next do battle.
The time for minor skirmishes is over. We now prepare for war. The villain Longshanks is poised to cross the River Forth and threaten the town of Stirling with a force of men-at-arms, heavy cavalry and a multitude of archers. Our newly forged army marches southward to establish our own base and attack the English before they can ready their troops. Right, so we need to defeat the English army and destroy their watchtower. So the hints, this scenario begins in a similar way to a random map game. After you play this scenario, you should know all you need in order to play a random map game. Okay. Kid, the time has come to take the offensive. The English have a fort near the town of Stirling. If we can defeat the English here, they may think twice about their invasion of Scotland. To win, destroy the English tower to the west. Before we attack the English to the west, we need to build up our forces. Have your villagers start gathering food and wood. Keep making villagers at your town site <coughs> until you ten. The more villagers you have, the faster your resources will come in. Kia. Scout cavalry are poor fighters, but they can see a great distance. You can use your scout cavalry to explore the rest of the map and find the English. You've found some sheep. Sheep are a good source of food, so send them back to your town centre and assign a villager to gather food from. You can specify a location for new units to gather by setting a gather point. For villagers, click the town centre and click the set gather point button. Use your villagers to build a mill near your forage bushes. You can gain more food by building fishing ships. To create fishing ships, have your villagers build a dock in the water to the south. The hill with the dead tree protects the only access to your town. It would be a good idea to build a watchtower on this hill once you advance to the feudal age. To fish, click a fishing ship and right click on a leaping fish. The fishing ship will collect fish and automatically return them to the dock. Fishing ships are also useful for exploring. Build a barracks and five militia to defend your villagers and explore the map. Villagers can also build farms. Build four farms near your mill when your forage bushes are depleted. Each farm needs only one villager working on it.
lagi ya ini enak ya You are close to the English base. Better not knock down this wall until you have an army of about 12 soldiers. Kid! The odd guest. Hello. Born it. Theodica, Vulgar, Theodica, Vulgar, Bid fear. Once you have gathered 500 food, advance to the feudal age at your town centre. If you are low on food, build some additional farms. So right down. Okay. Kid? So we got nine. We said at least twelve. We'll go for thirteen.
Now you have a large enough force to attack the English base. Charge. Keep your villagers working just in case you suffer casualties and need to make more troops. Once you have gathered 500 food, advance to the feudal age at your town centre. If you are low on food, build some additional farms. Kia. Don't forget, keep exploring the map. Grab Wigga. Yep, explored everything I can. Kia. Ho. Grab Wigga. Outpost. You know what to do. Knock it down. Kid, go go, go go. Once you have gathered 500 food, advance to the feudal age at your town centre. If you are low on food, build some additional farms. Good job. You have eliminated the English soldiers. Now, destroy that tower and our victory will be complete. The English are coming to attack. To protect your villagers, you can use the town bell to garrison them in your town centre. Click your town centre, then click town bell. Good. You defeated the English assault. If you have villagers in your town centre, ring the town bell again to send them back to work. Great job. You have destroyed the English camp. <coughs> the 
Battle of Stirling is sure to end in victory for the Scots. <laughs> now that you know how to build them, advance through the ages and find and fight your enemies. You have all the basic skills you need to play a random map game. The most common type of game in Age of Empires 2. Stirling was our first great victory. Even as we held the coastline, word arrived that Stirling Bridge had been held by a force of Scots led by the mythical knight of whom so many have spoken. Now we know his name. Sir William Wallace, the bane of the English. Edward Longshanks names Wallace a traitor and a criminal. Sir William replies he cannot be a traitor, for he never swore fealty to an English king. With Wallace leading our armies, the men fight with renewed vigour. Perhaps the tide of our misfortunes is about to turn. Our coffers were depleted at the Battle of Stirling. So we need to strengthen our economy once again before pushing south into lands held by the English. We need to construct a market and establish trade routes to the villages of friendly clans. Local legends speak of three sacred relics hidden south of Stirling. Acquiring these artefacts for Wallace's army will be a great boost to Scottish morale. Okay, so it's an artifact hunt then. Capture the three relics and garrison them in your monastery. If you lose your initial monks, you can train more from your monastery when you reach the castle age. The Scottish army has been rallied by recent victories against the English. The situation is starting to look up. It will help the morale of our army to collect holy relics and place them in our monastery. One of the relics is close to your town. An ally has another relic, and the English have captured a third. Good. You have a relic. Protect the relic in the monastery by right-clicking the monastery. You can retrieve a relic by clicking a monk and right-clicking the relic. Monks have other abilities as well. They can heal your injured soldiers or those of your allies. They can also attempt to convert enemy soldiers to join your army. Perfect. You now have one relic garrison. Relics garrisoned in your monastery will slowly add gold to your stockpile. Okay, so we'll send our scouts off. Uh, what's that? Farms are a good source of food once you have exhausted forage, bushes and animals. Farms are built like buildings and must be periodically rebuilt. To gather food from a farm, click a villager, then right click a farm. It's nice to have allies on the map. Your ally, the yellow player, can help you fight the enemy. You can also trade with your allies. To trade, first. you will need to build a market. Okay, I get it, I get it, I get it. Got a market. Market, market, market. Rob Wigan. Oh. Oh, 
Karlov. Mit vier. <coughs> right, where are these yellows? Where are they? Have a market. The market can create trade cards to generate extra gold. Oh. You can also exchange one resource for another at the market oh. for a small fee. Click the market, then click sell food for gold. Okay, we did that. Oh, there's the yellows. Okay, okay. Kid, tall. You made a trade cart. If you click the trade cart on your allies market, you can make tall. extra gold. The trade <coughs> cart will automatically make trips between your <coughs> and your allies markets. Did you know that there are three different modes for the mini map on the lower right corner here. of the screen? You can show Hello. only military units or only resources and trade units oh. by clicking the buttons just below and to the right of the mini map. Oh. You have reached your ally's town. Go inside to see how his city is doing. Your ally's gate will Marketing. open automatically Bit for you. Field. Welcome! If you've come for the relic, you can find it on the hill to the northeast of our town. Oh. Do I need to send a... Uh... Kid? Oh. Yeah, I need a Kia. priest for that, don't I? Bid fear, bid fear. Paul. Oh, you're just glitching out, aren't you? Is it, there's a sheep, there's a sheep ski. Villagers and soldiers normally appear outside of the building that created them. You can have your units move to a spot once they are created by using gather points. To set a gather point for infantry, click your barracks, click set gather point, then click where on the map you want your infantry to gather. Here, Rob Wigger. So which base do you reckon it's going to be in? No doubt, whichever one I pick it's going to be the other one. Right, let's build ourselves a little bit of a defensive... Uh, <coughs> defensive wall here. You can use the technology tree to see what technologies and upgrades you can research. <coughs> Click the technology tree button in the upper right corner of the screen to see the tree for your civilization. Well, I guess we're having a date there. Oh,
You now have two relics, Garrison. Bring back one more, and you will be victorious. Kia. Rob Wigger. Rob Wigger. Alright, so just building a little bit of a defensive wall around there. Oh. Rob Wigger. Bargara. Rob Wigger. enough soldiers now to think about attacking the English and recovering the relic. Mm-hmm. Do we? Do we? I don't think we do. I think we need more. Yeah, that's where's, where's the blacksmiths? If you're getting ready to attack the English, I can help you out. Here. Take this food and wood. Oh, sweet. There he is. All right. She's on it. She is building them houses. Now it's 50 the limit, same as H1.
Valgra. Bra boga. Age. Airlock. Who in it? Kia. We've been attacked by the, uh, the English somewhere. Rob Wigga. Hello. Rob Wigga. Right. I think we should uh, 
care for sure. Target it. Done cut. Street and uh, we are done.
destroy this before he got there. Boom. Congratulations. You have captured all three relics. Booyah. With the three relics locked away safely in Scottish churches, men murmur that we are blessed by the heavens. Our army now stands a chance as we prepare for the final clash with the English. Scotland now has archers and knights of our own with which to meet warships. We march south to Falkirk, where we will join with the army of William Wallace and plan our combined attack on the English castle. Okay, let's go for it. Battle of Falkirk. The only way that we can hold the boggy lowlands around Falkirk is to build a castle and as many walls as we can construct in a short time. These fortifications will serve to protect our camp as we construct siege weapons with which to assault the English castle. Once the castle is constructed, Wallace himself is sworn to join our forces. Together, we will attack Longshanks and his English troops. Okay, let's do this. Build a castle, build some walls, happy days. Right, hence the Scots are restricted to a population limit of 100. This scenario uses the Advanced Commands interface, although you do not need to use this interface to play Age of Empires 2. It does provide access to some more powerful ways to control your civilization. Different civilizations have different strengths. For example, the Scots, who are represented by the Celtic civilization, have fast and powerful infantry. The Britons have long ranged archers. Okay. The English could attack at any time. You have some walls already, but you should complete them as soon as you have enough stone. So, what, they gave one on the stone? Complete the walls where? Right. I'm not exactly sure where I need to put these walls. You can also build towers to defend your city. Units can garrison within a tower for defence and protection, and archers can even fire out of the tower. Here, <coughs> Pune. To build a castle, you must first advance to the next age, the Castle Age. The advanced buttons let you set combat states for your soldiers. A defensive soldier will be less likely to attack an enemy that comes near him. Click a military unit, 
Then note the combat stance buttons in the lower left corner of the screen. Using the advanced buttons, you can also command a soldier to patrol an area between two points and guard or follow another unit. You have enough resources to go to the castle age. You should do that soon. The advanced buttons allow access to a new type of formation. For example, with a box formation, you can protect a weak unit, such as a monk. Kid, toe. Forger, kid, toe. Rabuigia. Kia, toe. Rabuigia. Hello. Toe. Kid. Beat fear. Congratulations! You're going to find lots of things to do in the Castle Age. For starters, try building a siege workshop to make battering rams and other siege weapons. You may need to assign extra villagers to gather stone, so you'll have enough to build the castle and all the fortifications you need. Oh. 
Salgra. Right, so what did we need? 650? Yeah. yeah, 650. Sorgera? Beat fear. Wait, how long to get there? Right. In the meantime, we want to. Ah, siege workshop. Kid Hall. Where was the siege workshop? Rabuja. Kid. In the end again. No idea where we're going to put this bloody castle though. I might chuck it pretty close to that. Good job. Bravo With your new yeah. siege workshop, you can make so battering rams. Rams are slow, but they are resistant to owl fire and excellent in <coughs> You may need some rams to attack the English castle. Great. You have completed the castle. Sir William should be here soon, and then it will be time to attack the English. Hello. Me and again. Kid, be fear. Hello. Me and again. Wallace has come. Kid, oh. One of your most powerful units is created at the castle. Create ten more wood raiders. Erla. Beat fear. Beat fear. With William Wallace and his wood raiders on your side, the English may be in trouble. Margaret. Once you have a large army with plenty of siege weapons, go destroy the English castle. Kids, tall. Tall. Margaret. Tall. Kids, tall. Erlof, tall. Kid, fear, love, Kid, Kid, fear. Um Air love. Sharp. Beat fear. Beat fear. Oh. 
Kia, Nian again. <coughs> castle at Falkirk is no more. The English pretensions in Scotland are surely at an end. The forces of Wallace are triumphant. Go, 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 go. Go, go. It looks certain that we would be defeated at Falkirk. Yet somehow, though outnumbered and outranged by English longbows, we were victorious. The English castle was torn down. A Scottish one should be built in its place. William Wallace has shown us the path to victory. Although he is but one man, he inspires great deeds in others. Many of the Scottish knights and lords have drawn their swords with his. Wallace's own sword is a five and a half foot beast, forced of course in Scotland. He has sworn not to rest until his sword finds the neck of Edward Longshanks. 
The struggle will continue. But we have learned the ways of war. Now, it is the English who will true fear. Right, that's it guys. We've finished the William Wallace uh, campaign. Um, that was uh, that, that was pretty good to be fair. It did, it did feel like it was speeding up towards the end there. Um, I'll reserve judgment for now. Obviously we've got a lot more. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We've got 10 more campaigns left just in Europe. We've got all of Africa to do. A couple in America. We've got the Asian campaigns and we've got West Europe as well, which at the moment is locked. Let me just uh, click on that. Uh, it's the Lords of the West DLC, which we don't have just yet, but we will be getting that. But yeah, right, well, I think that's probably a good uh, place to leave it. So, um, thanks to uh, everyone who has joined the uh, joined the stream today. Much appreciated. Um, we will be back tomorrow night. What day is it uh, today? It is Tuesday. So tomorrow is Wednesday, so it's Warzone Wednesdays. We will be back at 8 o'clock with Jimbo to do some uh, more Warzone. Hopefully the exfiltration um, mode will still be available. Uh, if not, we'll be probably doing some duos or some uh, Plunder Blood money or Resurgent Trios. Um, but either way, we're going to uh, probably die lots and lots, not to kill too many people because we're not very good and probably end up dying by crashing our helicopters into trees. So that's the uh, plan for tomorrow. Then on Thursday, Thursday, um, there's a good chance we'll be back with some more Age of Empires 2, um, around uh, 8, 9 o'clock ish, and then on Friday we will be jumping back into Star Wars Battlefront Classic, that will be from around 8, 9 o'clock GMT again, and then on Saturday it is Doomsday, so we'll be carrying on with our Doom 2 Hell on Earth campaign, so when we, start, when we were playing that last week we got to a level with some... Um, crazy monsters, crazy demons that were uh, doing everything they could to try and kill us so it'll be uh, yeah, interesting to jump back into that one. And then on uh, Sunday we'll be uh, likely doing some more Age of Empires 2 and then Monday Command and Conquer and then back on next Tuesday Age of Empires. The uh, schedule is on the uh, Twitch page um, so be sure to check that out uh, for any updates. Um, also uh, the Twitter page that we've got, uh, I'll constantly be updating that as uh, as and when anything changes to the schedule. Um, if you're not already following us and you are a fan of the uh, channel, make sure you hit that follow button. We're currently trying to get 500 followers. That's a massive number, 500 followers, so over double what we've already got in less time than we've already been doing it. Um, so yeah, it's a big, big, big ask, but I'm, I think you guys can smash it out. Um, so yeah, please hit the follow button and um, yeah, also check out uh, our YouTube channel and our Facebook page as well. We're still building those at the moment so give me a few weeks to uh, get all the uh, content on there as best as I can um, and also we've got a discord server so uh, all the information I say is on the uh, on the twitch panel so make sure you take a look at that and uh, yeah I hope you guys have a great night uh, or a great day depending on what time it is wherever you are in the world and I will be back again tomorrow night for some more classic gaming take care guys speak to you tomorrow <laughs>